JC here for RetireCheap.Asia. I have one of my members from our membership site who's made a trip over to Thailand and uh, we're going to do a little interview with him. He hasn't been here long, he's just hit the ground so to speak and uh, uh, I think you plan, next time you'd plan on maybe being up in the north a little bit longer, yes. um, but uh, you've been here now over 24 hours but you're headed down to the to the islands, so that's a really nice place to go. But a little background um, before we, we talk more. Um, you were sort of overdue for a vacation. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> How long had it been since you'd uh, been away on a vacation someplace? It had been right around 17 years. 17 years, yeah. I'd say you're pretty much due for, for a vacation. And so what inspired you to to come to this part of the world. You could have gone to a beach in Florida. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of a long story, but to cut it short, a friend of mine way back in the day when I was in the Army uh, was in Vietnam, took his R&R &R in Thailand, and showed me his pictures. And I remember at the time thinking, my God, this is so beautiful. If I ever had the opportunity, I would love to see this place. Well, back in the spring, uh, I had decided, okay, it's been a while. I want to get away someplace different, see something really interesting, something that will stimulate my senses, stimulate my imagination, work on uh, the thinking part of me. And I started doing a lot of research on the Internet, and that thought bubbled back up to the surface. And I started looking into Thailand, and it was about that time that I stumbled across your videos. These are my YouTube videos YouTube before we videos. ever had a membership exactly. site. Mm -hmm. And I looked at one and thought, you know, this is interesting. And then a couple more, and I started thinking, is this guy really on the level? Can this be possible? <laughs> and uh, the more research I did, the more supporting background information I found that said, yeah, actually, you really can live this kind of a lifestyle mm -hmm. on this kind of a budget mm -hmm. in Thailand. And I'm a tad skeptical, and so I decided, okay, if this is real, it will hold up to scrutiny. Yeah. So I want to go over and see for myself. Cool. And that's when I began to plan in earnest. Yeah. And decided, okay, I want to see Chiang Mai to see I guess more or less the, the everyday life mm -hmm. in Thailand, but then I want a vacation too, so yeah. I want to see Phuket yeah. and just relax, kick back, and just chill. Mm -hmm. So I plan. I, in hindsight, I didn't allow anywhere near enough time for Chiang Mai. Yeah, that'll be corrected on the next trip. Now you've been in Chiang Mai. Now you didn't get a, you. You got to do some of the things that are really cool to do here right. you know some people would consider them tourist kind of things mm -hmm. but they're really cool and it's something you can't do back home uh, we have something called the flight of the gibbon which is um, if you're familiar with, like ropes courses and zip lines right. and things like that up in the forest canopy mm -hmm. they have the zip line going through there and so you did that yesterday what a blast yeah yeah I hear that I haven't been out to do it but uh, I hear it's really nice now uh, working with uh, Tony Robbins we used to do ropes courses uh, mm -hmm. at some of the events so familiar with some of these uh, some of these aspects but to go up in the jungle canopy and do this would be very cool another thing you did was you went and ha hung out and played with the tigers yes that Tiger was cool Kingdom right it's just awesome yeah with liability the way it's back home they're not gonna let you like hang out and lay with the tigers and play with them that's not gonna happen back home for sure no no <laughs> uh, we only get a few tourists eating every year it's not a big deal um, <clears throat> so Mike um, having been in Thailand now for um, over 24 hours but less than two days um, the feel that you've gotten for the culture, because up in the north is what you've experienced so right. far, the culture and the people, what is your initial um, interpretation of how it meets your expectations? Because you did do research before you came and look into it. How, how is it matching up with what you thought it would be like? Well, to be honest with you, I had some pretty high expectations because all of the videos that I looked at, all of the websites that I visited were pretty descriptive 
about what you can expect when you get here. So my expectations were pretty high, and I can say honestly that my expectations have been exceeded on uh, an exponential basis. Really? Yes. Uh, Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit? I was expecting a relaxed, laid-back atmosphere, friendly, outgoing, courteous, and that's just that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what you experience when you get here. The Thai people are so hospitable, mm -hmm. so generous, so accepting and tolerant mm -hmm. that it is just amazing. Mm -hmm. This is so far beyond anything that I have ever experienced in my life mm -hmm. that, as you mentioned earlier when we, chat, when we were chatting, this can become addictive. Yeah, it real can become quick. addictive really quick. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, one of the things is like people will notice if they come over and they uh, get themselves involved in a relationship with a Thai person. Um, like if if we met, and by the way, it's nice to meet you, Fani. <laughs> put a, a face to to who I've been communicating with. Um, the th a Thai person will sit. And as long as it takes for us to finish our conversation, whether it's 15 minutes, an hour, two hours, and they'll sit patiently. And some people say, well, that's real subservient, but it's actually not. I consider it as being courteous. Right. You know, they're very courteous and respectful to, you know, you're, you're doing something and they're along with you mm -hmm. to do it with you. Well, so it's not like they're, they're, they're focused on themselves and it's like, I don't want to be doing this and, you know, can we hurry this up? I mean, it'll get to that point maybe someday. Right. You know? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah, unfortunately it might. But as a whole, most Thai people are, even in restaurants, and I mentioned this to you last night, in a restaurant in Thailand, when you sit down to eat, um, the way Thais eat, it isn't like, okay, all the food comes, you eat, you get up and you leave real quick. Most of the time it's a social event. Right. And so you sit and talk and you get become a little hungry again. And so they eat in these little uh, groups of food, mm -hmm. you know, like they'll have some appetizers and a beer and they'll sit and talk. And then, okay, the menu will come back and we get a menu and they'll order some uh, main dishes. And then later on, they'll sit and have some more beers and talk. And so the food continues like that. And this is one of the reasons they never bring a check. You can sit there and they'll be rolling down the doors or sweeping the floors and everything. There won't be a check hit your table until you ask for it. Which again, it's that they're respectful of your time mm -hmm. and your presence. And so that's just part of the culture here. And it's, it's refreshing, isn't it? It really is. And you, you mentioned us having dinner last night. And that was one of the things that really struck me was from the time we entered that restaurant until we left, there was never once uh, any hint of a feeling that, well, we really need this table, you know, could you finish up because we got other people coming in and we, right. this is a business after all. Right. There was never any indication of that whatsoever. No. And any time that we wanted something, like I indicated that I wanted coffee, it was just the slightest indication that there was a need, and there was somebody right there. Mm -hmm. And it was always very gracious and very, you know, there was an, an attitude of um, appreciation. Speaking of dinner last night, five of us ate last night. And thanks for, for picking up the tab for that. My pleasure. You know, it was, it was a very nice meal. And when people come over and I meet them for the first time, I want to take them to some place that it's, it's a very good atmosphere for having conversation because, as you know, a lot of the places, if it, you're eating outdoors, which we eat outdoors a lot mm -hmm. without walls, it becomes a little noisy. So I took you to a place that was what I would consider a very nice restaurant. Um, and we sat there for, I don't know, almost two hours or something yeah. eating. Um, there were five of us at eight. Uh, you and I had a beer. And what was the, the total on the bill for five people? Well, since I hit the ground, I'm doing a lot of calculations mm -hmm. in my head, mm -hmm. translating. And the bill last night for five of us for meal, beverages, gratuity, mm -hmm. everything came to 850 baht. 850 which is baht. Less roughly than... a, little bit, a little bit less than 30 bucks. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we're talking a restaurant that it's uh, a very nice sit-down restaurant, very nice environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, we linens, sat in couches, basically, yeah, sat and in ate. Couches, uh, cloth napkins, linen tablecloth, real silver, mm -hmm. uh, and just very, very beautiful environment. Yeah. 
And I was telling a couple of the people that we were with last night that in America, had we done that, you, w there's no way we would have gotten out of there for less than, what, 150 bucks? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, you, you, you've experienced a little bit since you've been here. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, about the graciousness of the people, uh, the cost of things. Um, could you see, now I think you would originally uh, start doing some of the research because you're thinking about your retirement plans right. in the future. Um, so far, is this some place that you feel like you would feel at home to be able to um, to live uh, inexpensively? I know, and this time you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I haven't had a vacation. I'm, I want to really treat myself, mm -hmm. and that's really great. But you've also seen what's possible. Um, is it some place that you feel like you'd be able to fit in and, and relax and be able to live a good life? You know, my, my whole slogan is more life for less money. Right. Is that possible to do here? Absolutely, beyond any shadow of a doubt. Um, and even, even if it were comparable on a U.S. scale economically, I would still want to come here. Yes, it is far and above anything that you could ever hope to match anywhere in the Western world, I think, mm -hmm. financially. It's interesting you said that because a lot of people are worried because of the U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. you know, the fluctuation in our currencies. And uh, there's going to be a lot of changes coming up in the future. Uh, China's going to stumble at one point, which then will affect the Thai bot and it'll become weaker. Um, there's things that will affect the, the strength of the U.S. dollar. So this comparison, but that's interesting what you just said, that even if it was um, comparable financially, um, and I'm going to do a video about this. I'm going to title the video Psychic Income mm -hmm. because there's things that you get here um, that we don't get back home that you can't really put a price on. You know what I mean? One of the things, JC, that I think has hit me the hardest since I got here is just the general attitude of the people toward each other but also toward foreigners. Mm -hmm. The acceptance and the courtesy and the level of respect that you get mm -hmm. that is totally absent. And I've done a lot of traveling in the western part of the world. Uh, I've, I'm a truck driver, so I have been all over the U.S., all 48 contiguous states, every major city. I've been to Mexico, Canada, all throughout the Caribbean, Venezuela, and I have never seen anything like this anywhere. Mm. And I'm assuming that it holds up throughout, not just uh, Thailand, but through most of Southeast Asia, from what I've been able to discover, it does to a certain degree. The reason, one of the reasons I spend most of my time in the northern part of Thailand, I've lived in a few places in the north, is because of the Lana culture, mm. and uh, the Lana culture included uh, a certain set of values and rules that are sort of different than other areas. Okay. In fact, you'll see that they still wear some of the traditional outfits. Mm -hmm. In fact, somebody we were with last night, I was sort of shocked. They said they wanted to go shopping. They're not from Chiang Mai, per se, but they wanted to go to the market to buy some of the traditional uh, clothing mm -hmm. of the North. Um, it, it carries with it something a little bit different, and you'll experience this as you go further south. Um, the, the, the attitude changes a little bit. <clears throat> it's still 100% better than what it is back home, but you'll notice... And the heat has something to do with that. Right. Being from the southeastern United States, the heat in summer is oppressive to a certain degree, and it's um, you know it, you become lethargic. You got to mm -hmm. stay out of the heat and stuff. And I think it, it affects the attitude of the people as well. But up in the north, as you can tell, this is tough weather. Put up with it, isn't it? You know, uh, we're in February. It's like you know, yeah, nice. really nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to interrupt you for one second Go ahead, because sure. I want to no. put a plug in. For uh -oh. JC uh -oh. <laughs> and for his survival kit. Oh, wow. I didn't get it mm -hmm. when I came over because I knew I was going to be met at the airport uh -huh. by three lovely young ladies. Mm -hmm. I got to the airport, cleared customs, cleared immigration, walked out, nobody there. Yeah, well, this is exactly what I said. It's because of our flight schedules yeah. coming in. Now, they fortunately, they were just late. They got held up in traffic. Mm hmm but I'm standing there in the middle of the airport. It's 9.30 at night. The uh, exchange booth, currency exchange booth, is closed. I don't even know. I have a clue how to use a telephone. I could have called the hotel and they would have come pick me. But I didn't have a farthing in Thai currency. Mm. Uh, uh, listen, I don't care what your plans are if you're coming over here. 
definitely get JC's survival kit. Yeah, well, that's why I created happens. it, Mike, is exactly that reason. Exactly that reason. Because you hit the ground and all of a sudden, you know, they have a saying that says, man plans and God laughs, exactly. you know? If you don't have communication, you don't have cash in your pocket, that it's Thai currency, thing. and you came over with traveler's checks and stuff, so you have no cash that you can use, you have no way of uh, communicating no with people, phone. and no way to speak Thai to right. get people to understand if you have to walk out the door. Now, yeah. in an airport, they'd probably speak English, but you step out the door, it's like, you know... And in some places, you know, even the taxis, they're new to the... You know, they're behind the wheel, but they don't... They don't, can't speak really good English, right. and so... That's actually why I created it, and so I think it's helpful for the people. But um, yeah, I appreciate you plugging that. And, um, and he didn't ask me to do that, by the way. No, I'm sort of surprised. Um, but uh, well, I'm glad to finally get a chance to meet you and hear your thoughts, even though it's been a short time that you've been here. Uh, your thoughts and impressions so far, and um, hopefully we'll see you back again soon. You will. And uh, don't don't wait so long till you have no. another vacation. No. All right. And how about this place you stayed? How this is? I don't know if you can see it in the in the photo. I mean, this is like um, old style Thai architecture. Um, some of the posts that are holding the the hotel and the lobby up are, you know, yeah. three feet around. Uh, you know, timbers, and it's hardwood, so it's lasted a long, long time. But it's a beautiful place, isn't it's, it? It's fabulously beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just exquisite and. The facilities are just as nice as they could possibly be. The service has been just AAA all the way. Mm -hmm. And I would, uh, I would recommend this place, this particular place, to anybody that was on their way over here. Um, but I, I don't think it's just this place. I think it's probably 90 to 95% of the places in Chiang Mai are probably, as far as service goes, as far as what you're going to get for the money that you spend, mm -hmm definitely worthwhile yeah on any level you know you can come over here on a, on a budget and even in bi budget places you're going to be treated with a lot of respect and, mm -hmm. and you know, by most places now you know some people say I paint a rosy picture of this place and there are aberrations to that there are people that are irritated <laughs> you know, in all places especially cities you get further out of the cities and right. people don't have that but you know they're dealing with a lot of pressures here you know tourism and money and uh, occupancy rates and so the same stuff that we deal with in, in the same uh, genre back home of the tourist industry. So there are aberrations to that, but as a whole, Thai people are, are pretty pretty gracious people. And the value here is uh, a lot better than, than back home, for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thanks for the interview, Mike, and uh, it was great to meet you. And uh, I hope this has been helpful for other people that are thinking about making a decision of coming over. And as I always say, you know, come over and spend time now this is sort of a, a thing that I mentioned to you last night <clears throat> your trip was sort of short and you wanted to see a lot of places and I sort of compare if somebody comes over the first time you can do that you know hop around to different right. places and then say it's sort of like a cruise ship you know where it stops on different islands and right. you say wow I really like this place or I really like this place and then make a trip back and then spend a, uh, a more time in one place to really get a feel for it if you're thinking about coming and living over here so remember when it comes to uh, living over in Thailand and uh, enjoying your retirement, there's what? Always, Always an, option. an option. That's right.